I'm starting to think of these uh, video blogs as almost like television shows, little TV shows. So let's try it this way. Today's show is about money and banking, relevant to what's going on in the, in the world, which is unbelievable on many accounts. Uh, the first one is, was done by Nancy Kane and Jody Proctor in Los Angeles for the 90s, about uh, oh, 18, 19 years ago. And they got this guy who owns a bank to show him around the inside of the bank, kind of taking down the fourth wall, if you will, of a bank, and it's fascinating. So, and fun. So check that one out. And then afterwards, right after that, um, is a little more serious commentary. Well, I wouldn't say serious. From an old professor of mine, actually, named Paul Nadler, who wrote for the American Banker magazine. It was a very conservative uh, uh, business guy and a very uh, fascinating personal guy. We interviewed him in the train station in, in Newark. Um, and this is about the same time and it was on the 90s series. So check that out and uh, enjoy. You want to look at the bank yeah, we want to see and you want to see what you want to, but you want to look at certain things, don't you? Right. Yeah. Money. All right. All right. But do you want to look now or do you want to take a shot and, and see what's going on I mean, right, well, for later? Right. All right. Come on. All right. We're going to go back and look at the vault, okay? Here. It's not real fancy, all right? Okay. You can stay in here at night if you want, okay? If you okay. stay in here at night, you get fed through ventilator holes, all right? I'll show you that, all right? Here's all the safety deposit boxes, all right? Back here, I don't have the key. This is where the money is, back here. They don't let you have even the I can get the key. I can get the key, all right? Hold on. That's okay. David, who's got the key for the vault? The, uh, the, this is a TV show. They want to see where the money is. He's a friend of mine, okay. PBS. Okay, sure. Uh, come on. Can I call you back? Yeah, come on. No, these are background. This is David, this is Jody. Right, yeah, that's right. I've known Jody for many years. Here. They want to see where the money is. They're going to be very disappointed. That's right. Unglorious. This is David. Hey, He's David. been with us for how many years? Six years. Six years. Six years. Three days ago. Okay. I always expected yeah. big pallets of gold. Come on in here. That's what I was hoping for. This is not real, you know, fancy, okay? okay. You, get another you need to get another key? Uh, you can fit all the money well, in a bank in a large Gelson's shopping bag. $200,000 can fit in one quarter of a Gelson's shopping bag. When we opened the bank, we had $180,000 in a Gelson's shopping bag. And before the bank opened, we played Monopoly in the vault with real money. That's many years ago. So a lot of money, like 180000 is very teeny. You'll see. Now, what we'll do is we'll go upstairs. And then we'll go down to my office. But you go upstairs where the money, huge amounts of money, at least for this bank, are fooled around with, OK? Yeah. Now, do you want to see how loans are made and stuff like yeah. that? So is business good, Joe? Business is great. We don't make real estate loans. We don't make loans to oil companies. We don't make construction loans. All we do is lend to people. take the savings and loan business. Savings and loans started as a family financial center. You'd come in, you'd bring in your deposits, and they'd make mortgage loans. And it used to be what they called the three, six, and three business. They'd take your money at three, they'd lend it back to you at six, they'd be on the golf course at three. <laughs> now, it was wonderful. You didn't need much talent to do that. If you're taking in money at 3% and you're lending it at 6%, it doesn't take much talent to run the savings and loans. But what happened was this. They were making these loans long-term fixed rate. Many of the viewers would get a mortgage. 
you'd get a 20-year mortgage of 6%, 7%. I had one, I'm old enough, I once had one five and a quarter, 15 years. Now that's all well and good if interest rates stay the same. But what happens if interest rates change, which they do? If interest rates went up, and you had a five and a quarter percent mortgage, you said, thank God, I got a five and a quarter percent mortgage. The new guy's paying seven or eight, I'm paying five and a quarter, I'm happy. What happened if rates went down? You had a five and a quarter, you say the new guy's paying four percent, I'm gonna pay off my five and a quarter and get a four percent. So from the viewpoint of the finance institution, it was heads I lose, tails I get my money back. So. They finally realized that this was not going to work. So what do they do next? Had they been smart, they would have said, give me the power to change, to offer mortgages that we call adjustable rate mortgages, ARMs, that go up and down as interest rates go up and down. Then they wouldn't care. If rates go up, they charge more, they earn more. Rates go down, they charge less, they earn less. And they live on this spread between cost and returns on money. But that isn't what they did. Well, eventually the whole thing breaks down and the government has to come in. They've got all these deposits out there. There are no assets to cover them and it's going to cost the taxpayers $160 billion. If we pay it off now, $500 billion if we have 30 years to borrow the money and pay it off slowly. Now, where did the money go? The interesting thing is, you know, we hear all about people like Charles Keating building the hotel and Mr. Paul down in Florida who had the famous paintings and the jet planes and all that. That was only a small amount of the money. Basically, where the money went was that they had been paying it out, paying it out, and not earning it. And it, so it just, by keeping dead organizations go, letting them lose more and more and more money as time went on, this is where the money went. And I'd say the price, of course, is paid by all of us because of the fact that we had an industry that had such political clout, they refused to admit they were dead until they had used up a, a tremendous amount of the taxpayers' money, making it the biggest financial scandal in American history. Paul Nadler is the guy who first made it clear, to me at least, that the Federal Reserve had a very special relationship with the banks. And if the banks were called into the Federal Reserve for a, a lunch meeting in Washington, if a bank or bank president or whatever, that was the beginning of the understanding that there's no such thing as a free lunch. And uh, he called it tinstaffel. Anyway, one of our good pals and a, and a video artist, video journalist, uh, investigative journalist who ran the Washington Outsider, I think, Eddie Becker went to the Federal Reserve and tried to get them to go public and explain some things. So you'll enjoy that. And then there's also a little bit of what's going on in major proportion these days, which is printing money. So check it out. Everyone I had been interviewing about the Federal Reserve had said the, the Fed preferred to operate in the shadows, in the dark, away from the scrutiny of public view. Within these hallowed halls, bizarre rituals with money took place and takes place. I guess I'll just go in and see, see who I can find there who can tell me something about the money. Hmm. You know, it looks kind of deserted, huh? There's a squirrel. Hello? Huh? Yeah, what's up? Bob, uh, I... Is there maybe someone else who no, maybe Eddie. isn't the one who makes the decisions about how much money to print, but at least knows what the process is? So we just substitute someone. If I could, I would, Eddie, but I can't. Uh -huh. I can't. I'm sorry. Now, I'll be glad to touch faith with you again on Monday. And we but, but I told you Monday was too late. We have to send this in. And well, go what? ahead and send it in. Look, I've been trying to be forthcoming. I've been honest and forthright with you, but I'm sorry. You go out there and do something, whatever you feel is necessary to do. Maybe there's someone else who knows about it. I don't no. think the Federal Reserve has only one person who knows how, who makes the decision or how the decision is made to print the money. Or how the money is made. Just someone who would explain how the money is made. That's all. Eddie, we've got this. this I, how could there only be one pe person who knows about that? 
come on, Bob, be, be sensible. Right? How many people work here? You got two buildings. It must be filled with people. I'm going to hang up, okay? Okay, he hung up. We operate these presses 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How do I like making money? Well, I like making money fine. I've been doing it for quite a number of years now. Um, it has its shortcomings. It gets very boring at times, looking at currency all the time. Uh, and it's very, very redundant. Um, it has its exciting moments, and when you when you uh, manage to accomplish something, it's uh, kind of a pretty big thrill to know that you've done something unique uh, for the country. <laughs> What's the flaw? Any defect you can see in the sheets here could be a water wipe, a uh, break, crack chrome, crack plate, anything that you see, any defect you can see in the sheet. How often do you find them? Whenever they occur. How so. many flaws do you think get by you? Not too many. Not too many get by me. Sounds like a hard job. It is. It's a lot of strain on your eyes. It takes a lot of concentration and the noise. Yes. It's a lot of noise. All right. Thanks very much. You're welcome. What Thank you. To, what do you have to tell people about when they spend money? What would you like to see them buy? Anything they want to. As long as they spend it, that's making it. We we'll continue to make it and continue to have a job. <laughs> You want me to pull some? Yeah. Now, what's wrong with those? Nothing. Well, why'd you pull them? You asked me to. No, oh, man, I want you to do your job. I pull them. <laughs> those are good sheets. What's the best part of your work? Best part? Yeah. Well, I don't have no best part. Just sitting here. Yeah. I guess it must get a little boring. I do. How do you do, how do you do it? How do I do it? Yeah. When I get bored, I stand up. 